Satanás. See, and uh, you know, you go back to the history of the band. The, 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 the founder members of the band are myself and Abaddon. Family Tree. Uh, it started where uh, uh, Jeff had a band. I had a band. Uh, me and Jeff met. He needed a drummer. Um, drummers up. I'm thinking back. I've, I've done a couple of, of uh, interviews today, and, and this has come up. I'm thinking back. I don't think there were many drummers about because the band that I was in, I was a bass player, and we just played in the garage, in the bedroom, this kind of thing. But the two people in my band were the singer, the original singer that came into Venom, I brought him in, and the guy who was my guitar player became our long-time um, manager, Eric Cook. So that was what I brought to the table. Um, Jeff had a band and at the end of the day we got rid of them all and Jeff came you know, to, to, the, to the table, obviously. You know, I had a band at the late end of 1979 and who were all, I must admit, far superior players to me. I was just a noise merchant. And um, I've, I've said this before, I was constantly looking for something heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. I, I grew up in the 70s, so I came through, you know, T-Rex, the Sweet, and then I discovered Slade. And then the first single I ever bought was Seven Seas Arrive by Queen, uh, which was a sort of dip in the toe into heavy rock, I suppose. And then, you know, I discovered this band called Kiss. And then 79, I seen Priest. That was it. Fucking life changed when I seen Priest. Um, so then Venom sort of came together through that and it just, you know, people would come, people would go, but myself and Abaddon were always there. And uh, we had a different bass player. The bass player didn't work out and uh, Jeff was at a girlfriend's one night and he met, um, he met her friend's boyfriend, which was uh, Kronos. We used to go around to her house and just hang out and listen to metal music. And I walked in one night, she had a new boyfriend, and it was Kronos. So I introduced myself, said I was looking for a rhythm guitarist. He said he was in a band, played guitar, came along, joined his rhythm guitarist, bass player left. He took over bass, we became a four piece. I believe he came in as rhythm guitarist initially, so we must have still had the bass player. I had asked Kronos to sing a song that I had written, which was called Live Like an Angel, Die Like a Devil. And we all always had this theatrical thing going on in our minds. So the idea was that Clive, who's, who had adopted the name Jesus Christ, he would go off stage for a, for a costume change. Cronus would take over the vocals at that point, and then he would come back on. And then it was back to normal, back to being a four piece. But uh, the bass player went, so he said, look, instead of getting another bass player, why don't I just play bass? But I play like, um, like a rhythm guitarist, so very chordy, lots of chords. And, and that had a lot to do with where the sound of Venom came from, because that big, fat, messy bass guitar. So that became the, you know, the classic, I suppose, lineup that everybody recognises as early Venom. You know, I, I did the I did the logo. The logo was the, the first logo, I believe, where people couldn't actually read it. So people would look at it and go, "What the fuck does that say?" And it's like, I don't care. At least you're talking about it, you know. Fast forward to I don't know 1986 when I had left the band, um, and we got a couple of guitarists in, and basically turned into some Dave Lee Roth type of act. And the two personalities, the other two guys, they, they just didn't work. And Jeff started getting a bit jaded after, um, well, probably before we even started the third album. And the third, third and fourth album, I know we didn't like them at all. Um, so he left. Um, I recruited another two guitar players, American guy, um, Mike Hickey, and um, a friend of mine from Newcastle in England again, uh, Jim Clare. And we did one album like that, and it was a, it was a very, um, we, we had more time in the studio. So we, uh, and we were better, better equipped, we had better equipment and, and the studios had better equipment. Um, so we got an album which, um, and maybe we stretched ourselves too far, maybe that was the one album that didn't particularly sound venomous to me. I quite enjoyed doing that, I enjoyed the process of the band being um, excited again, you know, because like I say, they, they were getting a bit jaded with, with the other guys and it, it, it comes out, you know. So we, um, we did one album, we toured in Japan, uh, Brazil, Europe, um, and then I'd had enough, and it, it was kind of becoming the Kronos band, and I thought, well, 
and the, and the songs become a lot lighter and a lot more kind of um, Van Halen, very, very, um, very Americanized in a in a bad way. And uh, I was sitting one day with um, the guy from Music for Nations, uh, Martin Hooker, and he said, "Hey, but you know, I was talking about other bands that we had. We managed other bands. We were selling him on other bands." And he said, you know, "What about Venom? You know, what about Venom?" He said, "Well, what's happening? The other guys, Kronos and, and German Mike." had decided to call the band Kronos. He said, so what about Venom? And I said, well, what about Venom? He said, well, why don't you do an album? And I was, yeah, you don't get it, you know, it's a bit, it's not right. And he said, well, if you could, if you could speak to the guys, then, you know, I'd be interested. I thought, fucking hell. So we, uh, we're going home, me and Eric, the manager, we're going home. We said, well, what about it? Why don't we call Jeff, you know, to see what he's doing? Jeff was doing some solo albums at the time. And I said, you know what? If I called Jeff, but I had a plan, you know, if I, if, if I just said, hey, do you want to be in a band? He's probably going to say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm cutting my hair, fuck off. So I thought, if we've got a plan, then maybe, yeah. So we uh, said, but would you work with Conrad again? I said, well, Jeff's not going to work with Conrad, so we've got to knock that on the head. But who do we know that's, that's um, similar? I'd just done a tour with, uh, with uh, uh, Abaddon as a tour manager with Nasty Savage and Exuma from Germany, with my band Atomcraft, and we came back. Most successful tour we'd ever done, and they all wanted to leave. <laughs> Just leave it. And then a, a couple of days later, I got a call off Abaddon, and the, and the Venom manager then, who, who's recently just died, Eric, Eric Cook, you know, and they said, good, I'll go meet them in a pub, so I went down to a pub, met them, they were going, oh, your Cronus is gone, and, and stuff, and I was like, oh, shit, I know, hey, yeah, yeah, he's got around, yeah, yeah, but we got this album deal with Music for Nations, and they wanted an album, I was going, no, and they said, so, you know, bass vocalist, we need a bass vocalist, and I was like, oh, okay, what? Uh, well, there's a couple, I mean, who could you get? And they were, they were just laughing, and it was about 20 minutes or something before they went like, you know, you're taking the piss, aren't you? And I was like, no, why? And they said, well, you, you, that's why we asked you here. And I said, me? You know, and most people think me stepping in was like, oh, you were filling in some shoes. But, you know, I knew these guys from back in the day. He was known as a demolition man already. He didn't, uh, that wasn't a thing he added when he, when he joined us. Um, and I'd known Tony, I'd grown up, grown up with Tony being in bands and we, we were drinking buddies together and uh, he was very, very bad at drinking. When they said that, I, I didn't think I'm replacing anybody. I just went, fuck yeah. I said, well, the thing is that um, I want to get Jeff back in because then that legitimizes it. You know, in my mind, if two thirds of a band are there, that's especially the first two guys, that's a legitimate band. That's Venom, you know? And he said, okay. So we spoke to Jeff and Jeff was a bit reticent and uh, we eventually made it happen. Jeff came back because I was there, thought, oh, that's really exciting, and off we went. And then the primeval thing happened. And there was no Kronos and nobody really cared about it. There wasn't a big hoo-ha. There was, there was a little bit of a backlash on Tony, but not too much, not that he couldn't handle. And uh, so we did, uh, we did tenure, we did three albums, um, EPs, all this kind of stuff. At the end, I just felt that you know, we were into the 90s grunge was happening and in, in the UK, Britpop and that sort of metal was, but we, we held our own, but it just got to the end, about 92, where we finished the last album for Music for Nations, and, and I just got work in London, you know, and I, I, I kind of wanted to do it, it was a while back with the World Shakespeare Company, and uh, who I loved, I loved Shakespeare, you know, and this was a great opportunity. I just said, look, you know, we've done the albums and stuff, uh, Jeff was working, and I said, you know, I've got this opportunity, I think I'm just going to do that. And that was it, so, you know, there wasn't any fight. We didn't go, we, the label didn't kick us off. There was, there was nothing, it was just like, it seemed normal and natural, you know? And, and, and that's kind of uh, what happened. And then they did a reformation with the three of them, um, and they did a couple of albums, a couple of shows, and then it exploded again. You know, they, they, the thing with Venom is it just kept exploding, you know? They'd get it and go, okay, we've got it, we've got it. Now, they drop a bit and go, fuck, and then it would all smash again. After that, we had the reunion, 96, of the original lineup. Um, only lasted a couple of years because, you know, you just couldn't keep us in the same room together. Did the album Cast in Stone. Then I recorded with Pronos, did the Resurrection album. Then I just had enough. Jeff called me and said, do you want to do some music? later um, when he basically got over everything and I said well you know 
I, I don't think I want to because I had a very good job. I was doing the Olympics and, and, and doing uh, production stuff for a company called Billion Stage. I was doing Ramstein, the Rolling Stones, you know, the staging automated stuff, you know, with my other side is engineering. And, um, and I said, but he was like, yeah, but it would be really cool. And I said, okay, I'll tell you what, I always love playing and I always love writing and performing with you. So I'll say yes. But if I say yes, it means I'm going to have to throw this job down. And this job was worth like, you know, 120 grand a year to me. So I said, I'm going to go from that to nothing. Uh, but at no point do you get to put your guitar into the bed again and say, I've had it. I said, we go out with our boots on. That's it. Do we go out doing it? If you can say yes to that, then okay. So he said yes. And that's what we did. We started doing with the Empire. Tony Dolan came in, Empire of Evil was born, Anton left, we did a first American tour, leading right away up, we toured for years and years and years with Empire, and leading right up to the Keep It True Festival, where Oliver Weisenhammer asked Tony to do, appear as Empire, I said, great, yeah, let's do it. He says, um, would you consider if Abaddon was there, that you would do some tracks live, you know, Venom tracks, four or five, maybe six? Initially there was a festival in um, in Newcastle in my hometown and I went to see it and Tony's band Adam Craft were playing and uh, he got Jeff up to do to do a couple of Venom songs and I was standing at the bar and there were a couple of German guys with their um, black metal patches on and they turned around and looked at me like standing at the bar and they're like what the fuck why don't you play and I was like I don't know nobody nobody I didn't know this was going to happen nobody mentioned it and one of the guys was Oliver Weintheimer and Oliver had a festival called Keep It True in Germany and he called me up and he said look what the fuck you know the two guys are coming over they're going to play as Empire of Evil uh, whatever pay for you to come over in a hotel blah 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 would you get up and do some songs and I said yeah my initial response was no you know myself and Abaddon hadn't spoke since 1998 and it was actually Tony Dolan who convinced me you know, he's like, look, you know, why don't we just do this? You know, lay everything to rest and let's just do it. So I've got to admit, you know, I'm an honest person and I'm, I cannot lie. So sort of rather reluctantly, I said, OK, then. Middle of, middle of their set, it'll break down, you get on and just go for it. So I said, OK. So I got contacted and Tony rang up and said, these are the songs we want to do. Jeff at, the, Jeff at the time still didn't re, still was a bit right and he still didn't want to do it. So we all just flew into Germany, no rehearsals, sent the songs out, this is what we're going to do. We didn't really have a name. So I had an agent that we'd worked with a few times in Europe and he said, what are you going to call yourselves when you have Abaddon at the festival? I said, well, nothing really, we don't need to because we're playing with Empire and then he comes on, we've got a guest, he plays and then we fuck off. I said, we've got to have a name. I was like, well, Okay, what well, we think of the name? Jeff came up with Iron and Steel, which is a line from Die Hard. And I'm thinking, that's not like a band name, but okay, let's go with that. So we went with Iron and Steel, and people went, oh, so you're Venom, Iron and Steel? And we went, no, we're we'll doing Steel, we're Venom, we're just Iron and Steel. And they went, yeah, but it's like Venom, isn't it? And then the music was going, you've got to put Venom in there. And I was like, but there is a Venom. Come on, I don't Venom. I don't want to put Venom in there. We're, he's doing that, we're doing this. But we, we, it was a lost cause, it was a lost cause. We did an emblem and, uh, and we conceded and I went, okay, well, entombed AD and there's a bunch like that. And I thought, well, that's okay, we can do that. If we do Venom Incorporated, so we'll call ourselves Venom Incorporated, Iron and Steel. And that way it incorporates all of our other projects, M uh, Empire of Evil, if, uh, Jeff does his band Drill, if Abaddon does his side project Abaddon, which he does. Then I thought, well, then it, that's what we're saying. You know, it's Venom as well as everything else. And uh, we're fucking within minutes, people were just like, we're going, well, just not using the ink or going, can you just make the ink a bit smaller? It was like disappearing. And then they just dropped Iron and Steel. And for about three or four months, every time someone mentioned the band, Jeff would go, Iron and Steel, Iron and Steel, for the big Iron and Steel. And eventually we just went, you know, we're not deciding this anymore. We're just letting the fans do it. We, I like the fact that we've got the ink. Um, we use the original logo, which Abaddon drew, is, it actually is his logo. And we're unashamedly just going out there and being who we are. Um, but that's, the ink is a, just a, an extension so that you can see that there's the two. Uh, and, you know, one outweighing the other, because Cronus would love, the, uh, love us to die, um, I'm sure. Um, uh, uh, some fans would love him just to stop 
to, you know. Uh, but for me, it's like, you know, I use the analogy of ice cream. I was like, oh, do you like ice cream? Yeah, I kind of like ice cream. What's your favorite flavor? Yeah, strawberry. Okay. Now, what if I give you the best strawberry ice cream you've ever had in your front of your mouth? I only give you a teaspoon. That was it. And you'll never get it again. It's the best you've ever had in your life. Or I can give you a bathtub full. Which is going to stay cold and creamy and lovely. I said, which one would you prefer? Your teaspoon or the bathtub? The bathtub. So more is better. So if you've got venom and you've got venom ink and we're all playing everything, isn't that cool? Isn't that better? You want to reduce it just to one? It's like, you'll not see Mantis, Abaddon and Kronos on a stage anywhere. You just won't. But as a fan myself, as someone who loves the legacy, if you could see him and them, that's good. Okay, they're not in the same place at the same time, but you can still see them doing what they did, which affects you. After that one show, the phone went off the hook, and here we are today. And that's the way it happened, and you know, it's an old cliche, but we're on a roller coaster, I've just strapped myself in and I'm enjoying the ride. And hey, whatever happens, happens. Let's do it. So then that's a bit of a long-winded part of history. <laughs> Bye -bye. Where'd you be?